Hi, everybody, and welcome to day 27 of my 30-day Facebook Live Language Facilitation Challenge. Today's topic is the parent coaching model, and that's the model that I use as a speech and language pathologist to help the families that I work with. Now, parent coaching is not a new phenomenon. It's not something that I made up. It's actually something that a lot of parents um, expect and actually that is being implemented primarily with early intervention systems um, across the country and I know around the world too. In fact, I just was on Facebook and I saw that there's a group of speech pathologists who are working with this parent coaching model and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And I see some people are joining me today. Brianna's here and Sherry, let's see, I got to scroll down and Swati's here too. So thanks for joining me. Hello, good afternoon and thank you for joining me today on my live. Today I'm talking about this parent coaching model that I use and I'm going to tell you three different ways I'm going to explain it. The first way is kind of fun. I'm going to compare a parent coaching model to a child focused model, which is what a school or speech therapist um, that, that is in a private clinic might use, that, that child focused approach versus the parent coaching approach. And I'm going to talk about comparing them. And then I'm going to talk about four components of an effective parent coaching program so that if you are looking for a parent coaching program from a speech pathologist these are the four components that that I make sure that I have in every plan I create and then also I'm going to tell you five causes that a communication a parent coaching program might break down so um, you know the things that might contribute to difficulty with it. So let's get started with the first one. First of all, I want to tell you who I am. If this is the first video that you've watched, um, welcome. My name is Marcy Melzer and I am an intuitive speech and language pathologist. I've worked in the field for 30 years helping families teach their children how to use the words they need to share their wisdom with the world. I've helped families in my whole career move from nonverbal levels of communication, gestures, pointing, um, grunting, screaming, tantrums, all of those things into moving into using language to communicate naturally with their families with this parent coaching model. Right now, I work with families all over the world and I help them get their kids using the words they need to share their wisdom with the world with my parent coaching program, my Waves of Communication parent coaching program. And on this video today, I'm going to tell you about how that works, like why it, this approach is what it took me over 30 years to figure out what it is that takes parents from you know, helping their kids from frustration and not even understanding their kids on and and their kids being frustrated and not being able to express themselves to within a week or two or three at the most getting their kids naturally starting to ask for things. Most of the parents see improvement in a, in one week and it's just amazing to me. So I want as many parents as I can to understand that this kind of approach is really what it takes. Like when you get this kind of a plan in place, you can see this kind of improvement with your kids too. So the first thing that I talked about is how I'm going to compare um, language facilitation with a, a child focused approach versus a parent coaching approach. And I'm going to do that by using an analogy that I like to talk about a lot and about teaching a child to ride a bike. So let's say we had a parent coaching approach to teach a child to ride a bike and a, and a child focused approach for a therapist to teach a child to ride a bike. And I like to compare language development to learning to ride a bike because I feel like once kids do develop language, it really does take them places, uh, sort of metaphysically and cognitively and emotionally, but literally physically too. I mean, you know, you can call an Uber if you have language. So um, riding a bicycle is like giving a child who doesn't have anything other than walking a, a, a vehicle, a way to get places. And that's kind of how I feel like language is. You know, language is the vehicle for a child who is using nonverbal means to get places in the world. And so that's why I like, I came up with this little analogy to use to tell a story. So let's say we have a therapist, a speech therapist, and we're going to say that speech therapist in a clinic is teaching a child. 
child to use words naturally. And so it's the same way that they would be able to teach a child to use to ride a bike. The first problem is you can't ride a bicycle around very much in a therapy room. So the therapist is going to be limited in their natural ability to functionally use a bicycle. And that's kind of the same restriction that a child focused therapist at a school in a classroom and you know wherever they're working has and that same restriction actually even exists in your home even though the therapist is working in a natural environment if the things that are different about how they're teaching are still limited by the approach that they're taking so let's say same therapist has a bicycle they're going to be able to in the clinic setting they're going to be able to give you experience with the bicycle just like language they're going to be able to let you look at the bicycle touch a bicycle you can certainly bring a bicycle into a therapy room um it's the same with language you play with language you talk about things you know the therapist is talking quite a bit and that's one of the first strategies that they give to parents talk more to your child so they hear you have language and that's like with riding a bike seeing the bike looking at the bike you know touching it things like that all right and then the next step after you sort of get to know that it is a bicycle and you learn what it is and you hear people talking about it just like language the next step might be in a school if the child is a little afraid of the bike or just hasn't had very good experiences with the bike the therapist might have a picture of a bicycle and they say this is a bike and they might even have a picture of a child riding a bike you know with 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 lines behind it where you can see the wind going by and they can show the child what the experience of riding a bike and they can tell stories about how kids on bikes get places and it's the same with language as a speech therapist they start to play with language a little bit using the toys and the things that they have they're going to use um you know play e experiences and they're gonna and and they may be you know instead of the bike you know be using pictures to just sort of practice you know with things and and then the next step might be that they actually get the child to try to say words which would be the same as a child sitting on the bicycle in the therapy room and maybe playing with the pedals and you know holding them around you know spinning them around or learning how to balance on it you know and sitting on it like that they still don't get the experience quite of riding it and feeling the wind in their spay in their air but they do know how to pedal the pedals just like a child who works on oral motor exercises or imitating flashcard words they get practice at sort of the muscles that it takes you know your child's legs will get strong if they sit on the bicycle and pedal the wheels and they'll learn how to balance it if they sit on it but they're not going to have the experience of actually riding on that bicycle out in in the street because they aren't out in the street they're there in the clinic they're there in the office so and 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 then the other thing is that you know a, a speech therapist then you know might be able to go outside and say okay now that we've practiced that let's take the bicycle outside and ride around the outside but you can't do that very often like that's not part of every every lesson because you know it's cumbersome and it's hard to go outside and maybe the bike is too big or maybe the bike is bolted to the floor and it, we're just practicing on an exercise bike so there's just all those limitations that happened in a, in a child focused approach that don't happen in a parent coaching model so that's kind of the difference between you know language learning and um, you know language facilitation as a child focused you know simply by environment but then the other thing that you need to understand is that in a parent centered in a parent coaching approach how you can justify how you can shift things up and make things different is that when you play with the bike outside you know you get to run along with your child outside running around and, and alongside of them and you get to help them with it and and you don't have to do exercises like you know because learning to balance on a bicycle while it's standing still isn't really a skill that it takes even to ride a bicycle up the street because once you start going the balance helps you so actually learning to balance on a bicycle that's standing still isn't even the right skill you need to have 
And that's how it goes with language facilitation too. Sometimes speech therapists who get very focused on like an oral motor exercise kind of approach, they spend a lot of time doing tongue exercises like you know, moving tongues around and ooh and ee and that kind of thing. Or they practice with parts of words like ba, 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 ball, you know, like that. Or they practice the ba, 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 ba part. And, and then when kids go to practice that ba, 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 ball, I mean, you know, a speech therapist knows how to get those things together. But if you practice ba, 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 you're not practicing ball. Um, you know, and in a parent coaching program, you don't break things down to parts of speech or, or things like that, or we don't use pictures to represent. We use real things that you have in your environment and real experiences that you do all the time. So in a parent coaching model, that's going to, those, those unnecessary skills that you're teaching are eliminated because you have the natural experience to actually ride the bike up the street to practice it. And that's how you use language in your home too. In your home, in the clinic, the therapist doesn't have the ability to teach your child how to use language when they have a bellyache because usually in the clinic they're happy. They don't have the ability to teach your child how to use language when they are in the grocery store and they want something that they can't have. They don't have the ability to teach their child, your child how to overcome a tantrum for when you don't understand their speech because it's so difficult to understand, you know, because their sounds are so, are so um, misarticulated. You know, the speech therapist in the clinic isn't gonna have that ability to teach you just like they don't have the ability to teach to ride a bicycle out in the street. And a speech therapist knows how to do that, but just because they're not in your environment and they don't have those experiences like you do every day, they're not gonna be able to do that. So, so those are the difference between a child-focused approach and a, um, and a parent coaching approach. Now, there is one caveat here. If your child has real physiological problems like feeding, there are therapists, you know, parent coaching, therapists are, are broad based just like doctors, just like nurses, just like everybody. We're taught in school to do a whole bunch of different things. My particular specialty happens to be helping children go from nonverbal nonverbal communication to using words to communicate. But other therapists are perfect at helping kids learn how to use the oral, mo oral motor problems, oral motor musculature that they have for feeding and for overcoming, you know, those kind um, feeding especially might need to be more child focused because you actually have to do learn exercises and skills and ways to use your mouth. But with language facilitation, if we're using one kind of behavior, which might be pointing and changing that behavior into a verbal behavior, as long as your child has the physiology to be able to say speech sounds and they can hear, then you can teach them to use functional language. As long as they can interact with you and follow directions and you've taught them other things, you as a parent can teach your child how to use functional language as long as they show those capabilities and I've proven it parents can do it so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna tell you when you get a plan if you have a speech therapist who is doing home um, co home coaching with you parent coaching with you these are the things that you need to make sure that your plan has and every waves of communication family they have these things in their plan first of all the Learning that you're doing is functional, experiential learning. It may use toys because you use toys. It may use food because you are already eating food. It may use the outdoors because you are already going outdoors. It completely eliminates unnecessary task learning because unnecessary is unnecessary. If we want to use words, let's work on words. It's not necessary to learn gestures instead of words. So a therapist who is a child-centered a, a therapist may want to give a child an alternative means of communication, like signs or pictures or something like that. And, and when the child has no other means to communicate, if they don't have the ability to use words, to say words, to hear words, they may need an alternative or they may need something temporarily to get them to words, but we're talking temporarily one day, not a whole system, because it doesn't make sense to teach a whole system 
before you have to teach a new system. So if something like PEX is in your plan, you are teaching your child to use a picture communication system, and that's not verbal language. That is a picture communication system, a picture exchange communication system. You make words that's supposed to bridge into language, and when you do it, according to plan, it does bridge into language eventually. But first, you actually have to teach the child to use the picture system. So I feel like with parent coaching, if you're going to teach a child a system, let's teach them the system that they're going to use long term. Let's not teach them to ride a scooter board because it moves faster than walking. Let's teach them to ride the bike. And so that's how it goes with my language facilitation. So if you're parent coach you know if your therapist is trying to coach you into doing skills that don't make sense to you that aren't functional communication skills then you need to look for you need to ask them to revamp things you know so that they are so that they are functional so that they are getting your problem solved and your child's communication needs met all right, so the next thing is that um, you need to practice these strategies that you get in your coaching because parent coaching is all about giving you strategies to use with your child. That's basically what it is, telling you what to do so when your child has certain behaviors or does certain things or wants certain things or needs them or is trying to communicate with you, how you facilitate them to be using words in those moments. And so you need to be able to have strategies that you can practice often, that that you use every single time your child wants something every single time they have a tantrum instead of uh, words for communication um, you need to have strategies that are that functional that you can use all the time not just a one hour a day 30 minutes after dinner you know those are strategies that you can use to help facilitate more structured kinds of learning opportunities but core basic language, going from nonverbal to verbal for requesting and talking about your world, those things have to be all the time. They have to be all day long strategies. All right, and then the other thing is that no extra materials are necessary. So I just put something on my Facebook post today about non-toys, and I love that because you can use a pen for language facilitation. You can use, I just saw one of my other language facilitator moms put a picture of her two kids in a tub, just playing in the tub, or the laundry baskets. They love that stuff. All the things that you have in your household that your kids love to play with naturally, the box that the toy came in, the wooden spoon or whisk out of the drawer that they carry around with them all day, all of that stuff is what you will use for language facilitation. Now, that doesn't mean that sometimes I don't make recommendations. If a parent says, you know, we've got a birthday coming up or when Christmas is rolling around or we're going on a trip, is there anything that you can give us as far as ideas for toys or books or things like that? that can help us facilitate language and I certainly do do that um, because certain toys are better than others but truly you really don't need it um, you know if you you should be able to find things even in your environment to help meet your child's sensory needs so you know because in the old days when we were out playing in the park and at the beach and stuff we didn't have all that stuff we played with sand we played with shells we played with dirt we played with worms you know that all that stuff in the environment that you can have different tactile and sensory experiences with you can find those things around where you live and even inside your house so and that's what I help you do and that's what a language facilitator that's what a parent coach is supposed to be helping you do is to find the things that you already have in your environment and the problem that happens is a lot of speech therapists see we aren't trained in school necessarily especially maybe now but certainly not back in the old days how to um, do this parent coaching stuff it was all about evidence-based this is what you do with the child you take the child you do there you collect data about the progress that they're making and you get as many utterances as you can as much experience as you can from the child in the period of time that you see them because of course you have to maximize that period of time if it's only a half an hour a week or an hour a week or some people get two or three hours a week and they're really lucky that their kids have that much exposure to language but with a parent coaching model they have exposure to it every time they're with 
with their parent and each parent learns to do it so they get double duty if you have two parents in the home if it's a parent if it's if it's a household full of people they get multiple duty because everybody even other siblings are learning to language facilitate so you just don't rely on one person to be doing language facilitation for your child your parent coaching program should enable you to teach yourself as well as everybody else in the environment how to do language facilitation with your child okay and then that was that's the other thing about it that fourth thing is that it needs to be efficient it has to work within your day within your time so that you don't have to stop what you're doing to facilitate language I mean you may pause because you're going to be doing some strategies and introducing them there but you know the best language facilitation strategy can happen while your arms are full of groceries and trying to get the kids out of the car um, because it's all about coaching and we're coaching you as a parent in how to coach your child I mean that's how you teach and them everything is you talk them through it so we as therapists enable you to be able to talk through your language facilitation with your child and that's what the best thing is about you know making sure that you have a solid plan because that turns you into a language facilitator and then you learn how because you get so experienced at solving problems with guidance from a coach or a therapist that you get so good at it that you start doing it yourself and you pretty soon you're giving your girlfriends ideas to help with their late talking children and help them move their nonverbal communicating behavior because even kids who are talking use behaviors instead of words for communicating so you know you could be helping your friends learn how to do it too so that's what's cool about it so those are the four components of a really effective language facilitation plan for a parent and that's what you need a plan that incorporates all of these real functional natural kinds of learning opportunities in a parent coaching program so that you can get a chance to use that bicycle all day every day and think about how well you can ride a bicycle if you do it all day every day and it's the same about language if you practice language all day every day then you can't help but get good at it and then when you're good at it you're good at it with everybody because everybody around you speaks that language <laughs> instead of nonverbal gestures and tantrums a lot of people don't like that language so they avoid it and they don't want to engage with it but people do want to engage with words and that helps broaden a child's environment huge just language just having language all right so now maybe you do have a therapist in your world and you're receiving some early intervention therapy I see a couple likes about that and Esther and Christy and Colleen's here thanks for joining me everybody just so that you can understand today we're talking about the parent coaching model and why it is important for you as a language facilitator parent to use a language uh, to, to get coached to be informed to be taught by your clinician so that you know how to be a language facilitator now like I said if you have early intervention going on in your world and you do have someone coming to your home a developmental therapist or a speech language therapist and they are coaching you at least that's what that's supposed to be going on but it's breaking down for some reason my child's not making progress and I'm not you know whatever here's a couple things five things that could be going on that are putting a damper on your language facilitation efforts okay so the first thing is that you haven't addressed the core issue for the late talking now it's happened sometimes that kids hey Tammy's here so sometimes kids are late talking for reasons that haven't been completely resolved yet so if if your child continues to have ear fluid if your child continues to have medical issues or there are some real emotional things going on in your family in your household in your environment and things are unsettled those things have to be resolved before you can be an effective language facilitator your child has to have the good structure the good physiological structure they have to be able to hear they have to be able to use their lips and tongue and mouth to be able to make words that you can understand or speech sounds that you can understand okay they don't have to be doing it perfectly on command but they have to be making speech sounds sometimes and that can even be animal sounds because their speech sounds too like moo mm -hmm anyway so the first thing that could be the problem is that you haven't addressed the core reason for the late talking to begin with so consider that the second one is that the intrinsic value of whatever the clinician is having you facilitate for your child 
doesn't matter to your child. It has no value to your child. I'm trying to figure an easy way to explain that. What you're doing, your kid doesn't like it. It's not fun. If it isn't fun, it isn't fun. So if you are expecting your child to do a trait, that a uh, task that is challenging for them, and it's hard, and you know, it, it, and they don't like it, good luck. It's not going to happen. That's why the foundation for my program is if it isn't fun, it isn't fun. Because that's where a lot of kids break down in therapy. They don't like the environment. They don't like the toys. They don't like the person. They don't like, they don't like, they don't like. If you don't like it, you're not going to try. You're not going to enjoy. You're not going to have fun. So if whatever you're teaching to your child doesn't have intrinsic value to that child, but it's an important skill, like teaching, like brushing teeth, for example, then you have to make it super fun. Because if you don't want to do something, then you must have to change that in order to make it fun enough for them to want to try it. Because it's a child. You can't pay them to want to brush their teeth. You have to make it fun. That's the paycheck for a kid. So, all right. If it isn't fun, it isn't fun. Absolutely, Brianna. Absolutely. So the next thing is that the strategies aren't easy enough. Okay, so maybe your child loves to brush teeth, but they're not even good at holding the toothbrush yet, you know, and it, or it's hard. But when we're talking about language communication, you know, maybe saying sentences or saying, I want juice, please, mom, is not, you know, in their wheelhouse. And maybe even saying juice isn't in their wheelhouse yet. Like you say, you want the juice, say juice. It's not happening. It's not breaking down. That's too hard. Okay, if your child can't do it and they shut down on you, they either don't like it enough to try for it, or it isn't fun enough, or it's too hard. Okay, so the strategy has to be easier because the rule of thumb I have is that your child has to be successful with it 100% of the time with your help. So it's like riding the bike. Your child will never fall off the bike as long as you are holding on to the bike. With language facilitation strategies, they have to be that easy from the beginning. So easy that your child can always be successful with your help. All right, so the next thing is that um, parents don't stay consistent with their strategies. So yeah, maybe you might have the most phenomenal clinician on the planet. Maybe you have a language facilitation plan from me. Um, but I'm not going to let you falter. So I'm not going to let you fall through the cracks. If you're having difficulty and you don't tell me, then that's on you. But if you're having difficulty moving forward with your language facilitation strategies and you don't, and you tell me that some, there's some blockage, I'm going to give you a new strategy. I'm going to help you overcome that, that issue because it doesn't work if it doesn't work. Just like if it isn't fun, it isn't fun. And sometimes strategies don't work. And sometimes they, kids do, you know, other problems pop up and things like that. And that's why a parent-centered approach is important for you because you need to learn how to overcome those problems yourself. And for the first few problems you solve, you need coaching through that. So it has to continue. You have to stay with it and you have to, um, you know, continue to move forward. Okay, and then the last one is that parents don't overcome their kids' blockages to the communication before they start teaching them. So once again, it has to be fun and interesting for your child, but you can't facilitate language in the middle of a tantrum. You have to learn how to preempt those things, how to try to avoid the tasks to begin with in the first place. And if you don't, and if the tantrum ensues, you have to stop, drop, and roll, and get started, and, and go again. And um, yeah, so I think that it's really important that you, you know, that you do need, it says, Brianna says, they find out Jack's plan from EI. So great. So when you get your early intervention plan, it's really important that you make sure you include that. And for you, your own self, you know, whether your speech pathologist is intuitive or not, it's important for you as a parent to make sure that you're not trying to teach your child anything when they're not in a state of mind to learn it. 
okay? And that's how you use your intuition, is to help you get your child in a state of mind where they're going to learn from you, where they're going to appreciate the guidance that you're giving them, the coaching that you're giving them, just like you appreciate the coaching that your speech and language pathologist is going to give you in a parent coaching program. So that's what it's all about with this parent coaching situation. And I hope that if you do have an early intervention plan, and if you have a parent coach that um, you're working with, whether it is a speech pathologist or a developmental therapist, there are some amazing developmental therapists who aren't even speech pathologists who are very good at helping parents learn how to facilitate language because they've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, you'll know if your therapist comes to your house with a big bag of toys and wants to sit down to play with your child, that's child focused, okay? If your child comes to the house and starts to ask you questions about, you know, what your problems are and the kinds of things that you need help with to help your child, that's parent coaching. And if your your therapist does show up at your house with a big bag of toys, start telling them what you need help with. Don't wait for them to ask those questions. Tell them these strategies. Watch this video again and write down those things. You know, tell them, I don't want to learn unnecessary stuff. I want to be able to practice this all the time. I want to be able to do it everywhere I go, and I want it to be efficient. I want these strategies to be able to work with me all the time. And get your therapist working for you. Use them as a resource and, and have them coach you. So... If you are in, in of interest, because what I've been able to do with my waves of communication is I've been able to work out a system that I can do this for families remotely everywhere all over the world in australia in sweden in california in in dc in georgia i love it it's like little light bulbs popping up all over my little world map of language facilitator families that have learned how with their specific language facilitation plan to move their kids from nonverbal words into real language real functional natural communication and they've been able to do it faster than I ever could when I saw them as a speech therapist and used a child focused approach. I admit it, I was one of those therapists. I took toys to houses for years. I even brought my own little table to play with kids. And it took me figuring out in my own head, it wasn't me, it wasn't, it wasn't the toys. It was when I started to tell parents how to do it and when the parents did. So the most effective part of my session was the last 10 minutes when I was talking about here's what you do between now and next week. And so when I quit bringing all those toys and we just played a little bit but I spent the time talking to the moms, that's when it exploded because you guys know what to do. In my language facilitation plan, I will tell you, when your child does this, you do that. When your child does that, you do this, so that you know exactly what to do to zig and zag and navigate your child's nonverbal communication to help them overcome it and throw in that opportunity to learn language and facilitate language as a parent. So, Sume's here. Hey, Sume. Sume is on it. Sume knows all about what it is to be a language facilitator parent. She helped her son go from nonverbal to verbal in like a week, and I can't wait to hear all about her progress. So I'm super glad that you were here for this video today on the parent coaching model. If you have another family who you think could benefit from this information, if they're getting ready to work with an early interventionist, or if you know somebody who doesn't have access, or they've just not been able to get um, a plan from a parent coach model they certainly have access to me you can catch me on my website wavesofcommunication.com I have a free class on there for parents to teach you all about what it is to be a language facilitator parent and what it takes from my waves of communication program and I help parents teach their kids how to use words to use for communicating their wisdom with the world, to, to communicate all of their ideas, their needs, their wants, I love yous and, and frustrations and everything with words instead of gestures and language and nonverbal communication. So if you want to contact me, go to my website, send me a private message here on Facebook, and I will see you tomorrow for the next day in my 30-day live challenge. Have a great evening, everybody.